Welcome to Selections from the Hindu Scripture, Bhagavad Gita, Chapters 11 to 13, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. Hinduism is believed to be one of the oldest living religions on earth, with origins tracing back to the ancient Vedic civilization in India. With its deep spiritual roots, Hinduism is a vastly diverse and colorful religion. One of the most cherished values of Hinduism is ahimsa or non-violence. A Hindu practitioner is mindful of this spiritual principle in all aspects of everyday life. An example of Ahimsa is honoring the lives of all beings through a vegan diet. Of the many sacred Hindu texts that have been written since ancient times, the Bhagavad Gita is among the most famous. This 700-verse scripture is part of the epic poem Mahabharata. The Bhagavad Gita focuses on a spiritually insightful dialogue between Prince Arjuna vegetarian and his guide Lord Sri Krishna vegetarian. Today we present to you excerpts from chapter 11 the vision of the universal form and chapter 12, the way of devotion from the holy scripture Bhagavad Gita, which has been translated into English by Swami Swarupananda. Chapter 11, the vision of the universal form. Arjuna said, Salutation to thee before and behind. Salutation to thee on every side, O all, thou infinite in power and infinite in prowess, pervadest all, wherefore thou art all. Whatever I have presumptuously said from carelessness or love, addressing thee as O Krishna, O Yadava, O friend, regarding thee merely as a friend, unconscious of this, thy greatness, in whatever way I may have been disrespectful, to thee in fun, while walking, reposing, sitting, or at meals, when alone with thee, O Achyuta, the infallible one, or in company, I implore thee, immeasurable one, to forgive all this. Thou art the father of the world, moving and unmoving, the object of its worship, greater than the great, None there exists who is equal to thee in the three worlds. Who then can excel thee, O thou of power incomparable? So prostrating my body in adoration, I crave thy forgiveness, Lord adorable. As a father forgives his son, friend, a dear friend, a beloved one, his love, even so should thou forgive me, O Deva. Overjoyed am I to have seen what I saw never before, yet my mind is distracted with terror. Show me, O Deva, only that form of thine. Have mercy, O Lord of Devas, O abode of the universe. Diademed, bearing a mace and a discus, thee I desire to see as before. Assume that same four-armed form, O thou of thousand arms, of universal form. The blessed Lord Sri Krishna said, Graciously have I shown to thee, O Arjuna, this form supreme, by my own yoga power, this resplendent, primeval, infinite, universal form of mine, which has not been seen before by anyone else, neither by the study of the Veda and Yajna, nor by gifts, nor by rituals, nor by severe austerities, Am I in such form seen in the world of men by any other than thee, O great hero of the Kurus? Be not afraid nor bewildered. 
having beheld this form of mine so terrific, with thy fears dispelled and with gladdened heart, now see again this former form of mine. Sanjaya said, So Vasudeva, Sri Krishna, having thus spoken to Arjuna, showed again his own form and the great-souled one, assuming his gentle form, pacified him who was terrified. Arjuna said, Having seen this thy gentle human form, O Janardana, he who is the original abode and protector of all living beings, my thoughts are now composed and I am restored to my nature. The Blessed Lord Sri Krishna said, Very hard indeed it is to see this form of mine which thou hast seen. Even the Devas ever long to behold this form. Neither by the Vedas nor by austerity, nor by gifts, nor by sacrifice can I be seen as thou hast seen me. But by the single-minded devotion I may in this form be known, O Arjuna, and seen in reality, and also entered into, O scorcher of foes. He who does work for me alone and has me for his goal, is devoted to me, is freed from attachment, and bears enmity towards no creature. He enters into me, O Pandava. The end of the eleventh chapter designated, The Vision of the Universal Form. Chapter 12 The Way of Devotion Arjuna said, Those devotees who ever steadfast thus worship thee, and those also who worship the imperishable, the unmanifested, which of them are better versed in yoga? The blessed Lord Sri Krishna said, Those who fixing their mind on me, worship me, ever steadfast and endowed with supreme shraddha, devotion. They, in my opinion, are the best versed in yoga. But those also who worship the imperishable, the indefinable, the unmanifested, the omnipresent, the unthinkable, the unchangeable, the immovable, the eternal, having subdued all the senses, even-minded everywhere, engaged in the welfare of all beings, verily they reach only myself. Greater is their trouble whose minds are set on the unmanifested, for the goal of the unmanifested is very hard for the embodied to reach. But those who worship me, resigning all actions in me, regarding me as the supreme goal, meditating on me with single-minded yoga, to these whose mind is set on me, verily, I become ere long, O son of Prita, the savior out of the ocean of the mortal samsara, the cycle of death and rebirth. Fix thy mind on me only, place thy intellect in me, then thou shalt no doubt live in me hereafter. If thou art unable to fix thy mind steadily on me, then by abhyasa yoga do thou seek to reach me, O Dhananjaya, one who conquers riches. If also thou art unable to practice abhyasa, be thou intent on doing actions for my sake. Even by doing actions for my sake, thou shalt attain perfection. If thou art unable to do even this, then taking refuge in me, abandon the fruit of all action, self-controlled. Better indeed is knowledge than blind abhyasa, practice. Meditation with knowledge is more esteemed than mere knowledge. Then meditation, the renunciation of the fruit of action. Peace immediately follows renunciation. He who hates no creature and is friendly and compassionate towards all, who is free from the feelings of I and mine, even-minded in pain and pleasure, forbearing, ever content, steady in meditation, self-controlled and possessed of firm conviction, with mind and intellect fixed on me, he who is thus devoted to me is dear to me. He by whom the world is not agitated and who cannot be agitated by the world, who is freed from joy, envy, fear, and anxiety. He is dear to me. 
he who is free from dependence, who is pure, prompt, unconcerned, untroubled, renouncing every undertaking, he who is thus devoted to me is dear to me. He who neither rejoices nor hates, nor grieves, nor desires, renouncing good and evil, full of devotion, he is dear to me. He who is the same to friend and foe, and also in honor and dishonor, who is the same in heat and cold, and in pleasure and pain, who is free from attachment, to whom censure and praise are equal, who is silent, content with anything, homeless, steady-minded, full of devotion, that man is dearer to me. And they who follow this immortal dharma, as described above, endued with shraddha, regarding me as the supreme goal, and devoted, they are exceedingly dear to me. The end of the twelfth chapter designated the way of devotion. For more information, please visit Internet Sacred Text Archive, sacred-texts.com. Vegan, because we are benevolent beings. Generous viewers, Thank you for being with us today for Words of Wisdom 